Hi, welcome back. Um, so to this, in this video we are going to be finishing off the front end part of the website and what we're going to be doing is continuing from where we left off last time which is this category page that displays all the items within a particular category so you can see how we have these links across the top if I click on one you can see the items uh, that are in our database within that within that category. What we're going to do though if I just look at my um, worked example is when those are displayed we're going to turn them into dynamic links and that each one when we click on it will take us it will reload this index page which is our shell page but it will now load a new page currently we're only looking at um, category as you can see there but when we click now it's actually going to load a little page there called item and that item page is going to contain another dynamic link that then displays all the information we have about the selected stock item right so the first thing we're going to need to do is we are going to need to re or add some stuff to this category page that's going to convert these into dynamic links. So in Notepad, if you come to your category page, what we're going to look at here is you can see our little um, div there with a the class of item. Um, and remember there is a little loop that is displaying all the items within the category. Um, inside that those two paragraph tags there, or sorry, those two paragraph tags then will become links. So what I'm going to do is convert them to links. So they are going to go to a page and I'll just close that off there. That's where the link is. And the link will close over there. Now, the things that are going to be the link, it is going to go to our index page index.php and in the get array we're going to send through the page which is going to be called item and we have not created that yet but we will shortly and we're going to send a second bit of information so that's the and sign there and we need to send through the stock ID of the item that they click on so and stock ID equals now of course we can't hard code this number in here because we don't know what stock item they've clicked on so what we're going to need to do is we're actually going to need to insert a little bit of PHP there to dynamically grab the ID. So there we go. And what we're going to do is I'm going to echo here um, from the stock RS array uh, the stock ID. And I'll just put this in and then quickly go through it for you. There. So you can see there's a little line of code that just says echo the um, ID number. Um, and that's where we're ending off the PHP and you can see that is inside the speech marks of the link so this whole thing here I've highlighted is the link now um, the reason that we can do it this way is because we're in the middle of the do while loop every time we iterate through it's basically going through a row um, from our records or the results of our query and as it's going through it's displaying not just the name but now it's also going to get the ID number of that particular item. So now we'll just save that and have a look at that and make sure it works before we go any further. So here we are here, if I refresh that you can see they've all been converted to links and if I just click on that there, obviously the page item doesn't exist, there's a great big error but if you look in the URL it's picked up stock ID 5. If I go back to a skirts page, hover over the pattern knit convertible skirt that gives me a stock ID of one. So it is it is actually picking up the ID of the item we're clicking on. So that's good. So that's working. So now our job is to create that item page, receive that stock ID number, go and grab the information on it and display it on the page. So there's still a bit to do. Okay. So uh, back in Notepad here, let's just go ahead and create a new page, which I'm going to save as item.php. There it is there, and making sure it's in the right folder. Yep. Now, um, just get this in here first. Oops, I always mess it up. First thing we need to do is actually just check that um, 
the stock ID was actually set because we don't want any unexpected errors if uh, this page is, is loaded for some reason. So I'm just going to uh, redirect them back to the index page if, if they, somehow this page is, is called without an ID number being set. So I'll just put re, let's see, redirect back to index page. And the way we're going to do that is with a little if statement, a little condition there, and what we're checking is if something has not been set. So the explanation exclamation mark followed by is set means if it's not set. And the thing that's not set um, is going to be the stock ID, but that has been sent across in the get array. So to, to check that, remember that's dollar sign underscore get all uppercase, and then the square brackets and apostrophes, the thing that we're actually checking. So this is going to look in a URL for a thing called stock ID. Now if that is not set, we want to redirect ourselves back to um, what do I want here? My location index.php. We want to actually redirect ourselves back to the home page. Okay, so let's just save that and just check how we get on here. So um, currently I'm getting uh, no error because the stock ID is set. If I remove the and stock ID part from the URL and just hit enter, it redirects us back to the index page. So that little error catch there is working, so that's great. The, um, the next thing we need to do then is we need to select all the information uh, about that stock item. So uh, what I'll do then is I'll set up a, a little variable here called item underscore SQL. And it's just going to be a basic SQL query. We're going to select everything, which we do by using the asterisk. Um, and from the stock table, but of course it's only for where the stock ID matches a particular number. And that number should be sent through in the get array. So we're just going to concatenate that number on. So dot dollar sign underscore get. And then in the square brackets and apostrophes, stock ID. And just again to show you what that should be doing, back in here, when I click on one of these links, it should be picking up this little bit of information right here. Um, I'll just double check that. So what we'll do is we'll just echo item SQL before we um, run it. And if I refresh that page, select everything from stock where stock ID equals one, per perfect. If I click on another item, this has a stock ID of 6, and you notice it's been picked up there. So it's in both the URL, and it's pulled from the URL, and it is then concatenated onto our query. Great. Okay, so I can remove my little bit of checking. So our next thing to do is really run that. So um, I'm going to do that. I only want it to run, obviously, if results come back. So if, and what are we after here? We've got called it item, didn't we? So item underscore query equals, and we're using MySQL i underscore query, and then in brackets, remember there are two, um, two parameters here. There's the DB connect variable which we set up, which has all the database connection um, information, and then the actual query itself, which is item underscore SQL, which we set up in the line above it. So if that thing runs with no problems, then we're going to do the following, and that is actually organize the results of item query into um, an associative array, much as we did in the previous video. So item underscore RS is going to be MySQL I fetch associative, and in the brackets there, the one that we're organizing is item query. So we'll just double check that that runs with no errors. So I'll refresh this. Good. Okay, click through here. Good. So we're getting no errors. And if I come up here and put a stock ID number that doesn't exist in our database, no errors. Fantastic. It's not giving us a no no results found or anything like that. Okay. So if that is true, we organise that stuff in here. We're now just going to display all the information we need. And um, I'm going to do that inside our 
if statement. Um, so right here, the results are organized into the associative array, and then we're just gonna go ahead and enter them. So I'll just break it. I'm gonna use HTML to format it. So I'm just gonna break out of the PHP. Can we start it there? Let's see. And the HTML, I don't know. I mean, it's up to you how you wanna format it. I'm just using H H1 tag, and I'm just gonna display the, um, I guess the name. So the associative array that contains all our information is item RS and name is the column heading. And in case you have, let's see, forgotten, let's see, not the case. I should probably just quickly duck back into that um, database so you can see it. Let's see if I can't spell. If we go into our stock table, you can see we have, there we go, uh, a column called name. So we're going to display that. Uh, we'll put the price in there and um, we'll put, probably I'll just put the description in. I don't think I'll bother with anything else today, but obviously there's more there you could do. Um, and we will come back to the images at a later date. I haven't got around to um, working on how, or doing a video on how to upload those, but I'll get to that soon. So, um, in here we've got the the name being displayed uh, I'm just going to put in the price in fact I'll put a dollar sign there just in front of the price right there and what else do I want the description So all we're doing is we're just echoing our information from this record set. And I'd better just check that was description. Yep, description is the column heading. So what that should do is it should display the name of the item, its price, and then that little blurb about it. So we'll just head back and check skirts, pattern knit convertible skirt, and there it is. If I go to dresses and click on another one, you're getting the information about that. So I know the formatting is not pretty, but obviously you can just do what you want with the HTML. The essential thing is you've now got a site that pretty much the whole front end is functional. Um, we have a shell page that contains a main content area down the bottom there. Um, that main content area changes based on what the user is doing. So in our case here, we are looking at the different categories. It is loading the same category page into here, but the stock items displayed change. So there's a dynamic query. When we click on one of these, it now goes through a, another page called item, which is still displayed inside this main content area. Um, and it contains information on the item that was selected. So that is the entire front end of a dy dynamic website built. This should be a fairly sustainable design as well, because you can just change the index page anytime you want to do uh, a layout change. Um, and you just move around your main content area. Um, what we're going to be coming to next time though is the back end or the admin side of it. And we're going to be looking at a range of things um, and there's plenty of videos on those coming soon. So uh, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.